Welcome to our veterans, to the women and men who have served and provided us really the opportunity to enjoy a day of recognition. Uh, you've made and allowed our nation to be safe and to be the nation that we are, the United States of America. I would like to thank each of you for your service and to welcome you to our event today. Today we're here to talk about benefits that are available to you, benefits that you've earned for your service and the great team that we have at San Bernardino County. We're led by Colonel Guerrera, who runs our Veteran Affair, the number one provider in the state of California of veteran benefits. From education to health care, we have staff and the team members here willing to work directly on your behalf to ensure you receive the benefits that you have earned. I'm very excited today to talk about the enter and starting of our Welcome Home Veterans Program. This will lead the state of California, if not the nation, with reaching out proactively to our Californians that have served and provided our security with open arms to the benefits that they've earned because we want them back home. We want them back in San Bernardino County. We want them back in the high desert. With our military footprints that we have, the operations are here, there's an open demand for their, their, their expertise and services. Employers are standing in line to hire our veterans with opportunities that provide living wage, security, and add to the great value of our community and the lives of the First District. I would like to thank each of you personally for joining today's events. It's just very important and heartfelt to all of us. Our number is 760-995-8100. Please reach out to the office that we can help in any way. Go to our website. Go to the county website. Again, the Veterans Benefit Team, led by Colonel Guerrera, can't be understated the service that they have to offer for you and members of your family. Again, thank each and every one of you for your service, for your sacrifice, and your contribution, not only to San Bernardino County, but to all of America. Thank you. Hello, my name is Frank Guevara, your County Veteran Service Officer. At San Bernardino County Veterans Affairs, it is our mission to assist you and your family to receive the benefits you've earned. There are many state and federal benefits available to you. Did you know there is a California College Tuition Fee Waiver Benefit? Last year, we waived over $6 million in college tuition and fees for children of veterans. Call us to see how your children can become eligible. The majority of our request for assistance involves filing disability compensation benefits for injuries that occurred during military service. Service-connected injuries can include non-combat injuries that occurred during duty or during training, combat injuries, off-duty injuries, broken bones, sprains, hearing loss, ringing in the ears, stress-related injuries. Often these injuries linger after you leave military service. Our goal is to help you get a VA disability rating where the VA will provide free medical treatment for you as long as you have the injury. In most cases, it's for the rest of your life. Did you know veterans with any disability rating can utilize military commissaries and base exchanges? I invite you to call us for a comprehensive benefit assessment. Last year, we had over 35,000 visits to our offices, which resulted in veterans receiving over $47.7 million in new cash benefits. Our veteran service officers are accredited with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to ensure you receive competent representation when filing your claim. That means we represent you when you file a claim and stay with you until the VA makes their decision. In some cases, we will file an appeal if we don't agree with their decision. I invite all veterans to contact our office if you have any questions about your benefits. Other reasons to call us is if you receive a letter from the VA. Oftentimes, it's confusing and you're not sure what they're asking. Show us a letter, we'll tell you what it says, and also give you your options. Recently, a veteran brought in a letter from the VA stating he received over $130,000 in benefit overpayments. We reviewed his VA records and determined he was eligible for those benefits. We called debt management and had that debt erased that day. During this period of COVID, we are conducting the majority of our assistance by telephone. Our quality of service is the same. We're just not meeting face to face. Feel free to call us for anything related to your veterans benefits. And as always, our services are free. I also want to take this time to introduce our new Welcome Home program. 
It focuses on veterans who have recently left active military service. This program contains information on finding a job, information on health care, education, and readjustment counseling. There is also information on unemployment benefits, CalFresh, and CalWORKS. You will find this program at welcomehome.sbcounty.gov. Thank you, and we look forward to serving you. Uh, I've been asked this morning to, uh, to talk to you about what we do with veterans. Uh, first of all, uh, that's probably our, our number one priority in our office. And, and maybe it's a reflection of me. I'm a, a veteran and uh, maybe I kind of very sensitive about uh, some of the things that have happened in the past with veterans when they're trying to get help with the, uh, the VA, when they're trying to cut through the paperwork. And, uh, and quite frankly, they get the runaround. And a lot of times it's because they're older. Uh, and I would hope to, that they weren't being uh, uh, gaffed off in other agencies just because they're veterans. The point I'm making, this is a huge priority. And uh, I've got a young lady, Kim. If you haven't met Kim that has come in there, she's, uh, uh, she's about 100 years younger than I am. The veterans love her, and she works the issues, and everybody works the issues. And if they're not going to find the, the, the issue or we're not going to solve the problem, then they bring in the bad guy, which is me. And I'm, I say, well, what do you mean you're not helping the veterans? So uh, this is something that in terms of feedback after eight years, and even when I was in the assembly for six years, God, I'm getting old. Uh, this is something that's a very, very high priority and something that I feel very comfortable with the great job that we do. But more than that, if you know a veteran out there and they have a problem, please, please get in touch with us. We cannot solve a problem unless we know what the problem is. And I have the greatest confidence in my staff and everything else. But if somebody's complaining about it or this or that, point them in our direction. That's our job. So once again, uh, love the veterans, love the military, and uh, simplify and uh, stay young and stay healthy. Take care. Hi, my name is Jason Judkins. I'm the Director of Financial Aid and Veteran Services. Uh, welcome to our Veterans Resource Center and Veteran Services at Victor Valley College. Um, at our VRC, it's a welcoming environment for the vet coming out of the military to pursue our education. Uh, for active duty me members who want to pursue education, they can come here to also, uh, even veterans dependents looking to get an education. Um, as mentioned, it's a welcoming environment, so we have a counselor if they're looking to get an education plan, if they don't know what quite uh, program they want to get into. Uh, we have over 100 programs between certificates, degrees, transfer programs. We have career technical programs like welding, automotive, um, electronics. Uh, we have a wide range of opportunities if students are looking to change careers, uh, maybe uh, go to a four-year. Um, uh, so those opportunities are available. We have a VA certifying official that certifies educational benefits. We have a uh, veterans uh, financial aid technician helping veterans out with their financial aid. We have different events sometimes. We'll have like a books and supply giveaway. Sometimes we'll host a job fair. Um, sometimes um, even Veterans Day celebrations. So we, it's really you know nice for the vets and veterans dependents and active duty members to come down and just um, you know take advantage of the resources that we have. So we kind of treat it as a one-stop center. So they come in to pursue education, if they want to study, if they want to get their benefits certified, if they just want to connect with other veterans and just have a calm and uh, place that they can relax in. So in showcasing our VRC, uh, Veterans Resource Center, um, one of the first things uh, one of the student comes in is we welcome the student onto our VRC. We have them log in and they can choose what services they need to get, like counseling services, if they're looking to use our study area. Um, or even to talk to a certifying official. Uh, we usually have uh, someone greeting them. 
when they first come in, kind of directing them if they have questions, uh, whether it's about their benefits or how it works with you know, counseling appointments and so forth. So usually uh, what will happen is we'll have a counselor here. Um, we'll take in appointments to talk to the student about their education plan. Maybe this, the uh, veteran is not, um, they don't really know what program they want to get into yet. So it's a chance to talk to a counselor one-on-one. Um, if they have questions about their benefits, we usually will have someone um, able to help them out with that. Maybe they're not sure the, the process to get those. Maybe they're just coming out and just kind of want to see, okay, what, what is that uh, like? So we'll have some direction given on that. And then we have a uh, study area. Kind of uh, students can log in, use the computer, do homework. Um, maybe they need to register for classes, so forth. And um, we usually will have staff work study helping them out if they have questions on what the process is uh, to matriculate. Um, and then over here, we have uh, a lot of uh, helpful uh, companies that have helped out our VRC in the past, like Bank of America, Walmart, Wells Fargo. They've done a great job in uh, supporting our VRC. Um, so a lot of these uh, computers and so forth, furniture, have been helped out by these uh, generous donations. And back here, we have a little lounge area where our uh, veter veterans, veterans dependents can kind of relax. Maybe they need to, you know, talk to other veterans just to kind of a, you know, relaxed area to, uh, you know, watch TV and, you know, just not worry about school for a little bit. We have a little kitchenette area so they can use that to get coffee, you know, food and so forth. And back there we have like a little wall um, showcasing some of our vets who've, um, you know, when they're in boot camp and so forth. So, and then we have the uh, world map uh, where some of our vets, you know, you know, point out uh, where they're at. And uh, you'll have some vets that'll, that'll connect because they'll be, you know, in the same period. I, I was there in uh, Yokosuka, Japan or, you know, wherever. Um, so they'll connect that way. So we, we try to keep it as a kind of a warm, welcome environment. Uh, make sure that you know they're following the path to get their education uh, but also as a resource if they need help you know just kind of maybe outside the school if they need uh, contacts through there maybe VA Loma Linda or High Desert Vet Center um, so you know we just want to make sure that when the vet veterans dependents or even active duty come here that they understand that we're here to help, out. We're here to help them out here to you know help them get their education and um, you know make them you know go forward Hi there, I'm Dr. Sean Gilboy with the High Desert Vet Center and I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do hit the vet centers and I want to start at the very beginning. Uh, after the Vietnam War, uh, a lot of our Vietnam veterans were coming home and their needs were not being met by the VA at the time and that was for a couple of reasons. The first off was that uh, post-traumatic stress wasn't even defined. Uh, it wasn't even a, uh, named a disorder uh, and so when they were going in with their readjustment issues, with their post-combat related issues, uh, the, the folks that were helping them out didn't know what they were looking at. So throughout the 70s, through the efforts of Senator Cranston and others, they developed several different fronts. On one front, they developed a program called the Vet Center. And the Vet Center was an incredibly flexible facility not hemmed in by whether you have insurance, whether you don't, what your diagnosis is. It had one rule. If you served in combat, walk on in. We're going to treat you. And that vet center program got kicked off in 1979 with one center here in California. And since that time has grown to 300 vet centers across the United States and all its territories. We've got five in Hawaii. We have one in Guam, one in America, Samoa, one in Puerto Rico. I mean, our goal is to have a fabric network of vet centers so that anywhere you go, we're going to be able to reach out and touch you and uh, take care of you. The other thing that happened uh, around 1980 was the DSM-4, our cookbook for mental health issues, uh, came up with the diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. So we knew what to call it. So now we could fund the research, we could diagnose it, we could classify it, and, and, and that was a, a help along the way as well. Now the vet centers, um, 
they initially only treated Vietnam vets, but as the, the new wars came along, we had Grenada, we had Somalia, we had OAF, OEF, uh, they opened up services to all individuals who served in a combat zone. In 1990, approximately, they also opened it up to military sexual trauma survivors because that scourge is going on in the military and uh, their needs were not being fully met uh, at the VA hospitals. So the vet center uh, opened up to those services and we have qualified professionals to help with those issues as well. Um, one of the hallmarks of the vet center program is our flexibility. As I said, there's one cost of entry and that's a DD-214. And the DD-214 that says, I served, or if you've experienced military sexual trauma, to, to include uh, any harassment that you might have uh, experienced. Again, our inclusion criteria are quite broad. Uh, you can walk on in, no red tape. And um, one of the cool things that we have is the flexibility. Readjustment counseling is kind of a vague, fuzzy term, to be honest with you, but that's intentional because it involves anything and everything to help you get back to living your best life. So if that's intensive therapy uh, to work through the combat stress or traumas that you experience, then we're gonna do that. If that's couples therapy, we're gonna do that. If it's family work, we can do that. If you wanna bring your grandchildren in to, to talk with some larger family issues, we, we do that too. If it's a hiking group or going bowling, great. And sometimes, I, I think my, my shortest intervention was one session. Came in, had some sticking points, we talked it out, and, uh, and he was good to go. So if, if someone wants to come in for well, one session or 100 sessions, we've got the flexibility to do that. We look at post-traumatic stress as a normal reaction to abnormal situations. I mean, post-traumatic stress has really been uh, around since the beginning of time, at least humankind. And uh, like I said, back in 1980, when we were able to kind of identify it and, and, and look at the different um, markers for post-traumatic stress, then we were able to develop some interventions that would help people uh, get back to squared away. So I look at post-traumatic stress as uh, kind of developmental in the sense that everybody at some point in their life is going to experience post-traumatic stress. Now, it is a little unique in the military in the sense that our men and women are very young when they experience the trauma uh, and also they get it in, in clumps. For some people it takes 50, 60, 70 years before they have a, a lifetime of traumatic stress and our, our young service members uh, get fed by the fire hose early on in life. So that's one unique factor. I think another unique factor is that the, the military has a culture of suck it up. And that's kind of necessary, but it's not a pillar to live by. It's actually a productivity slogan because we need boots on the ground. And so what that does though is it creates this idea that we need to suppress our thoughts, we need to suppress our emotions, which creates this inflexibility inside of us. And, and once we keep that in, it starts making us sicker and sicker. So our challenge here at the Vet Center is to help develop that resiliency and readjustment and develop that flexibility to life again. Flexibility in your thinking, flexibility in your thought. And, and how we do that, we work toward balance. We focus in on your values. Uh, oftentimes people say, well, my value is America, or my value is my spirituality. But in reality, we have, I don't know, maybe four or five top values that we try to live. And living only one of those values uh, 100%, that's not a life of balance. And so our challenge is, how do we help you get in touch with those values that you choose to live and help you live them in a balanced way? Another thing that we look at is a here and now focus. What we know is the only place from which we thrive is the here and now. But our traumas take us back. They take us back into the, 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 the baggage and the, the memories that uh, um, were destructive in our life and, uh, and kind of plays a record, kind of becomes a broken record. 
And so our challenge is how do we work through those, make those traumatic memories less relevant in your life. We never forget them. We never get over them, but we make them less relevant so that you can get back to living in the here and now. The same thing, a lot of times with post-traumatic stress, we have anxieties. And that, what is that? That's living in the future. So again, how do we pull back in, be realistic with those, work through those, and get back to living in the here and now? Another thing that we really look at is living with purpose and meaning. We get fed that when we're young. When we're little, it's behave, go to school. When we're a bit older, it's get married, have kids, do your job in the military. They give you your purpose and your meaning. But then you reach a certain point in your life where what is my purpose? What is my meaning? What do I do? What do I get up for every day? And that can happen post-military. It can happen after a divorce. It can happen after you retire. And then the responsibility is on us to figure out what do I want to have meaning in my life? And I'm not talking about some mountaintop spiritual meaning. I'm just talking, what do you get up for every day? I mean, for one guy, it was going to Star Trek conventions three times a year. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. Another person, it was gardening. For another person, it was just being the best granddad he could be. But we help individuals get in touch with that as well. Here at the vet centers, we have psychologists, we have MFTs, we have LCSWs. I, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we, we do individual, we do groups, we do couples. We, we go to the prices right. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of flexibility. Um, and I'm going to leave you with this. In the military, going to see mental health was seen as a, a sign of weakness, unfortunately. And... There was a lot of coercion and, you know, you were uh, a less than stellar soldier if you were going to, to mental health in the, in the morning, especially if it was instead of PT. Um, now, as a civilian, as a veteran, it's fear that keeps you from getting help for yourself. Fear that you're going to fall off of some cliff, that there's going to be some, some huge void, something's going to fall apart in your life. And I can tell you, for a fact that there is no cliff that you're going to fall off. I've been working with individuals with post-traumatic stress, worked through my own issues. There is no cliff you're going to fall off. There's recovery. There's readjustment. There's getting back to living the best of the rest of your life. Again, I'm Dr. Sean Gilboy with the High Desert Vet Center. Walk on in. Good morning. Uh, my name is Karen Young Lo, and I am the president and CEO of Lighthouse Social Service Centers. Uh, before I begin, I would like to first thank uh, Supervisor Lovingood uh, for um, his vision in providing um, a platform for us to discuss resources and services that are available um, in San Bernardino County. Uh, Lighthouse is uh, a housing uh, provider um, and we provide services to individuals, to families, uh, to persons who were formerly incarcerated, to unaccompanied youth, um, and to veteran. Um, I've been asked uh, today to talk a little bit about um, homeless services specifically to our veteran um, population. Uh, Lighthouse um, provides uh, services to veterans in a number of ways. Uh, we have a grant and per diem program, which is a transitional living program for homeless male veteran. We're able to serve um, up to 12 veteran at any given time. And we provide, um, along with housing services, because it is a residential program, we provide case management, uh, group uh, services, uh, substance abuse recovery services, as well as mental health services. And finally, um, through that program, we work with a veteran in identifying permanent housing um, in our community and then transitioning from our transitional living program to that permanent housing situation. We also have um, a program called Supportive Services for Veteran Families. And through that program, we provide rapid rehousing services as well as homeless prevention services. So what is rapid rehousing? Well, the idea behind rapid rehousing is that through case management, through advocacy, as well as through temporary financial services, we work with a veteran and his or her family in identifying and securing permanent housing as quickly 
as possible within their community. And along with the case management, as I said, we also provide some limited temporary financial support. And that could be um, utility assistance, it could be security deposits, it could be some rental assistance. We also work with them in building a budget, um, with looking at what kinds of benefits um, might be available to them, whatever is necessary to be able to help that veteran family stay secure um, in their stable housing. Then our final uh, program that Lighthouse has is the Hope for Heroes program. And that is a permanent supportive housing program for veterans who have a disability. Um, it could be a veteran, a single veteran, or a veteran with a family, but the veteran household person does have to have a disability in order to be eligible for that particular program. And again, we do provide intensive, comprehensive case management services through our Hope for Heroes program, as well as we um, assist the veteran with their rental subsidy. So the veteran doesn't have to worry about paying their rental subsidy. And then we work with them in, um, in identifying benefits um, and increasing their income with the idea that I know that it does say that it's permanent supportive housing but the idea really is that it's not going to be a permanent situation that we're going to help the be uh, veteran identify whatever um, income is necessary and whatever wraparound services and put support services are necessary for them to ultimately be able to transition into their own permanent housing where they don't need us uh, anymore. Um, I wanted to also mention that uh, U.S. Vets uh, as well as Keys um, also have um, supportive services for veteran families uh, programs. You might also know them as SSVF programs. And Life Community Development has a grant and per diem program, which is a, tr a transitional living program for female uh, veterans in uh, San Bernardino County. Some other resources um, include our VA. Um, and that's our largest veteran resource. And um, if you need um, to contact the uh, VA, you should contact the VA Healthcare for Homeless Veterans Program. They have outreach uh, services, and they also have um, HUD-VASH services. HUD-VASH is really Section 8 for veteran. Um, you do have to be chronically homeless um, in order to um, be eligible for HUD-VASH services, but if you need those services, please contact your VA. I want to also remind any veteran who might be, you know, um, listening to this broadcast that, you know, you are one of, you're, you're our heroes, you know. Um, we, we live the life that we live uh, because of the service that you provided, and so if you are in need, it's our chance to provide you with services. So I encourage you to please contact the VA. Uh, they have also mental health services, substance abuse uh, services if you're in need of that, um, as well as your medical services. So please do contact the VA. And I want to just give you also the VA's number. It's 909-825-7084. Um, Again, that's 909-825-7084. 7084. Another fabulous resource in San Bernardino County is our coordinated entry system. Um, and all you have to do in order to get to the coordinated entry system is to dial 211 on any phone, on your mobile phone, on your regular uh, uh, phone, digital phone, just 211. And they actually have a VA representative that will help you with linking to um, other uh, services within our, our county. Um, Department of Veterans Affairs, I know that uh, Frank Guevara is going to be a part of this uh, presentation, but they are a wonderful resource for advocacy and also for um, helping you to um, secure retirement benefits um, or your service-connected disability. Don't forget that you might be eligible for service-connected disability or for re re retirement uh, services, so please uh, contact Frank's office. And finally, I also want to to um, let you know about a wonderful resource called Heroes Warehouse. 
Um, and Heroes Warehouse, their purpose is to provide um, furniture and housing items to formerly homeless uh, veterans. And um, they will furnish your entire um, household. So please, if you are in need of household um, items or, for, or furniture, please do contact uh, Heroes Warehouse. They are a nonprofit organization. And also, if you're a veteran who might not be homeless, but might be um, watching uh, this broadcast, please also know that Heroes Warehouse will also accept donations. That's really the way that they get other things to um, our homeless veterans. So if you have some gently used um, furniture or household items that you'd like to donate, please do contact uh, Heroes Warehouse. And let me please give you uh, their number. It's 909 714 2640. Again, that's 909 714 2640. You can also call Lighthouse. Um, our number is 951 571 3533. Again, that's 951 571 3533. And a real person, I promise you, will answer the phone. <laughs> and um, all you need to do is tell them that you are a veteran, that you are homeless and that you are in need of services. And they'll go through a very brief assessment with you. And that's just really to figure out where the best services are because what we don't want to do is we don't want you to have to call here and call here and call here. We really want you just to be able to call one place and be able to get refer either those services there or referred quickly to the services that you might need. So. For Lighthouse services, you just call us. We'll do a very brief assessment. And then if, you're, um, if GPD is appropriate for you, then we'll, we'll connect you with our GPD program. If SSVF is appropriate, we'll connect you there. If Hope for Heroes is appropriate, we'll connect you there. Now, let's say that, that the services that you need, um, Lighthouse doesn't provide. What we will do is we will help you to access the appropriate services. So we'll work with you to get you connected to those services, as will uh, Hi, I'm Clint Miller. I'm a veteran representative for the state of California, the Employment Development Department. And uh, I'm part of a team in San Bernardino County that uh, we work with uh, organizations and companies to find employment opportunities for veterans. My specific job is to work with those organizations and companies. And then I have colleagues that work with job-seeking veterans one-on-one -on -one to help them uh, write a resume, work on interviewing skills, job searching uh, tips, um, anything that is job-related that a, job, a veteran may need, we can help you with. Uh, and like I said, it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, service with uh, my colleagues. And then once the veteran is ready, ideally we can connect them with uh, my network of contacts and uh, get them employed in a career job. We also partner up with San Bernardino County Workforce Development and we can offer through their programs, uh, on-the-job training programs, uh, where the employer would actually get paid uh, from the county for hiring a veteran. Along with uh, that, there's also workshops that are offered um, remotely or in person, depending on the situation. And you can learn um, uh, just different tricks on how to search out jobs, uh, a lot of it is electronic, but where we can help out a veteran is even if they find a job electronically, then we can contact the company on behalf of the veteran and uh, our goal is to get you an interview. We have uh, offices uh, throughout San Bernardino County. There's one in Victorville, one in Ranch Cucamonga, and one in uh, San Bernardino. Beyond that, uh, if you want to work outside the county, uh, we have a vast veteran network throughout the state of California. And uh, between myself and my colleagues, we know just about every veteran representative 
uh, that works for the state of California. So if you were looking to relocate, we could connect you with them. And also nationwide. We have um, a nationwide network of veteran representatives that work in all 50 states and can help you out if you want to relocate. Uh, they know the immediate uh, local area where you may be moving to. So you can, uh, you can contact us, say, hey, I'm moving uh, to Florida. And more than likely, between uh, myself or my colleagues, we can get you a contact uh, in Florida to, to find work. We can uh, give you tips on how to maintain your job. Um, a lot of it is a lot different than being in the service. Please reach out. Uh, our uh, website, uh, you can find uh, our, all of our locations at uh, www.edd.ca.gov. And what you would be looking for are America's Job Centers. Uh, like I said, we have three in the county of San Bernardino. And uh, once you get into those locations, you could just call our uh, main office uh, number for that location. And then uh, they will connect you with uh, a veteran representative. And we can begin the process of getting you employed. How's it going, everyone? My name's Mike, and I've been covered by VA Healthcare for more than a decade. I'm here to tell you the biggest difference between VA and the health insurance options available to civilians is the cost. With VA Healthcare, there are no annual fees, there are no premiums, there are no deductibles. Some veterans may accrue copays, but they are minimal and they are capped. So if you are healthy and maintain your enrollment status, you essentially will never pay a dime for your health care coverage. Yet, it will always be there when you need it. So let's dive into some of the facts. Stuff like flu shots, lab work, and other basic services, or what the VA calls preventive medicine, is free for all enrolled veterans. All care associated with your service-connected disability will be free. That includes counseling, imaging, medications, medical supplies, and any other service you may need to care for your service-connected injury. Veterans over 50% disabled will have no medical costs at a VA facility, period. Veterans who are 70% disabled will be happy to know they can expect assistance with things like nursing home care, long-term residential care, adult day care, respite care, and other programs associated with geriatrics. Veterans who are 100% disabled can expect everything I've already mentioned to include free dental coverage. I challenge you to find health insurance that promises to cover your medical needs without fees or premiums. It doesn't exist unless you are enrolled in VA healthcare. In addition to the healthcare services you would expect to find in any hospital, VA also helps veterans with finding housing, education, job assistance programs, and even starting your own business. VA can literally help you no matter where you are in life. Like I said, I've been using VA healthcare for more than a decade, and it has yet to cost me a single penny. So do me a favor, enroll in VA healthcare. It doesn't cost anything to enroll, it's free, and begin connecting with the benefits you have earned and deserve. VA is America's largest integrated healthcare system. We are committed to providing veterans with timely, high quality healthcare. VA offers a variety of healthcare services for eligible veterans from primary to urgent care to telehealth and nursing home care. When you choose VA, we promise to make care available to you when and where you need it. You may be eligible for VA healthcare if you served in the active military, naval, or air service, and did not receive a dishonorable discharge. You can apply for VA healthcare by visiting VA's eligibility webpage or by applying at your local VA medical facility. Veterans can also apply by phone by calling 877-222-8387.
You can find your nearest VA medical facility by using the VA's Facility Locator webpage. If you are enrolled in VA healthcare, you may be eligible to receive care from a non-VA provider in your local community. This is known as community care. You may be eligible for community care in one or more of the following situations. You need a service not available at a VA medical facility. You live in a U.S. state or territory without a full service VA medical facility. You qualify under the grandfather provision related to distance eligibility for the Veterans Choice Program. VA cannot provide you with care within certain designated access standards. It is in your best medical interest or a VA service line does not meet certain quality standards. To receive community care paid for by VA, you must generally be eligible and officially authorized by VA in advance. To find out if you are eligible, talk to your health care team. You can learn more about community care by visiting VA's community care webpage. If you need treatment for a minor injury or illness that is not life-threatening, such as a sprain, cough, sore throat, or earache, you can access VA urgent care and same-day services at your local VA medical facility. You may also be eligible to visit an in-network urgent care provider in your local community. To be eligible for community urgent care, you must be enrolled in VA healthcare and have received care through VA from either a VA or VA community provider within the past 24 months. To find out if you're eligible for community urgent care, contact your local VA medical facility. If you're eligible, you do not need to get prior authorization from VA to receive community urgent care. If you get community urgent care, make sure the provider is in-network. To find an in-network provider, use VA's provider locator or contact your local VA medical facility. To learn more about community urgent care benefits, visit VA's community care website. If you live too far away to easily visit your VA healthcare provider, you may still be able to get the care you need remotely with VA Telehealth. With VA Telehealth, you can meet with your healthcare team and more from the comfort of your home or mobile device safely and securely. To learn about telehealth options in your area, contact your medical provider or your local VA medical facility. If you are eligible for VA health care benefits, you may be charged a co-payment for care or medication provided or paid for by the VA. You may be charged a co-payment when your care is not related to a service-connected illness or injury, your income is greater than a certain amount, or your income information is not available. However, you may not have to pay a co-payment in some situations, such as treatment you receive for a service-connected condition or if you are catastrophically disabled. For more information about co-payments, visit VA's Healthcare Information webpage, call 877-222-8387, or contact your local VA medical facility. When you use VA healthcare for a condition that is not service-connected, VA may bill your health insurance for medical services, supplies, and prescriptions. In that case, we will ask you for your health insurance information so we can bill your insurance correctly. Money that VA receives from your health insurance goes directly back to the VA medical facility to pay for treatment, medications, supplies, and equipment for veterans. To learn more about veteran health insurance, visit VA's healthcare information webpage, call 866-400-1238, or contact the Facility Revenue Office at your local VA medical facility. If you have a concern about the care you're receiving at VA, we're ready to help. The best way is to contact the patient advocate at your local VA medical facility who can help you with almost any problem. If you are a veteran in crisis or no one, please call 1-800-273-8255 and press 1 or text 838-838. 255 or use support for deaf or hard of hearing by calling 1-800-799-4889. Help is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, every day of the year. You can also visit the Veterans Crisis Line website to chat online and find more resources. 
At VA, it's an honor and a privilege to serve you. Thank you for your service and thank you for choosing VA. For more information about VA healthcare, visit VA's website or contact your local VA medical facility. In closing, I'd just like to add, there's been no greater component of my public service than working on each of your behalfs. You and your families, it just means so much to us, but all constituents, and what an honor it has been to represent and serve you. Thank you.